Much like the weather today at Hamden behind me, the Scotland men's team have been quite miserable in recent years, having failed to qualify for a major tournament since 1998. However, there's been a different team catching the eyes of many, and that of course has been Shelley Kerr's Scotland women's team. The squad have qualified for their first ever World Cup finals in France in 2019. Of course, that could mean change in the domestic game as well. We've been competing, you know, Glasgow City have been our representatives and Hibs as well a couple years back in the Champions League. You know, they got to the last state a few years ago. So you've got an amateur team playing against PSG whose, uh, whose budget was six million euros. Okay, so you've got that massive, massive gap. Fast forward to now, um, you've got a Scotland team who we qualified for the Euros last year. This, you know, qualifying for World Cups, absolutely, you know, I'm still so excited about that. I mean, it f feels like yesterday that that, that all happened. Um, that is a massive, massive deal. The only way you're really, I think, going to grow the game outside of where there perhaps is an interest already is to have it on the biggest stage with the best players. I was really lucky to work at the World Cup four years ago. Even though I wasn't covering England, you know how much the momentum was growing at home as England were doing better and better and better. And, and I think that, that third place for them is what has essentially kick-started, I think, the, the league's structure that they have down there now. The fact that it is a fully professional top flight in England has massively been benefited by the fact that the interest just grew hugely around that World Cup. Yeah, I mean, it's really kicked on. I've noticed um, quite the difference this year. Um, just hopefully we can continue that trend and, and keep getting girls interested in football. Whether it's playing, whether it's watching, um, we are just here to try and be role models for these girls and, and hopefully get them interested. I think if we compete well at the World Cup, we're on that world stage, let's not forget it's the world stage, we're going to have millions of eyes on Scotland as a, as a country competing. I think we can do well and I think if everyone can see our female athletes on TV, in the media, playing at the highest level. It's, it can only do great things and, and that can only have a positive impact on what we're trying to do as well uh, from a club perspective. With all the success with Scotland's national side, on a domestic front, clubs continue to operate financially at an amateur level. While there are professional contracts and offer for certain players, there isn't enough funding currently for teams to function professionally. As a result, most of Scotland's internationals play their league football in England, where clubs can afford to pay their players full-time wages. But a successful World Cup for Scotland could see a potential growth in investment from advertisers and the government that would shift club status from amateur to perhaps semi-professional. One of Scotland's leading clubs when it comes to international representation is Glasgow City. I'm on my way to speak to the media commentator Callum Patterson, who hopes that money from the World Cup could trickle down into the domestic game. Uh, the Scottish Women's Premier League and, and, and the, the Scottish Women's Football have done really well in recent years because they have got sponsors in for the league, for the Scottish Cup. There is you know, the sponsorship place there, so I think there is prize money filtering into the game now. Probably not enough for you know to make pro teams and stuff, but they've done a really good job, but it in the last, say, a couple of years or so. Um, so we do have money going in the game. The Nash team's great, um, but there has been a trend though that most of the Nash team squad is now you know, players that are playing down so I think there's four or five home-based you know, league players in there. You're kind of hoping that, the prof that in terms of profile with the Scotland National Women's doing well and the money that may they might generate for themselves and might generate more people think, oh well, there's, there's money to be had in, in the women's game, in the domestic game. The young players are, are really, really good and getting even better across all the clubs and um, the top flight particularly, but even in you know, the second tier and beyond there is some good young players. On, just on the line! Season. I don't think it's that there aren't players up here who could go down and do that. I think there are. Um, but I think the level of the top teams, I mean, we're talking like the Chelsea's, Man City's, Arsenal's, it's, I think they're streaks ahead of, of the likes of Glasgow City, which they might not like me to say, but <laughs> that genuinely, I think, I think they are. Um, and the facilities that they have are phenomenal. I mean, all those teams train at, at the men's training centres, they... They use all the facilities the men have. They have the cryogenic chambers, they have the heat training chambers, whatever they're called. They have all the things 
that you see if you've watched that Man City documentary when Benjamin Mendy's get, going through his rehab. The girls are getting all that treatment and all that care. And I mean, I don't, I mean, other than Hamden's sports science and physiotherapy centre, I don't even know if you've got that available to the girls up here. I, I don't know. Um, but it's uh, so all that added together, just they're, they're in peak condition. I think, yeah, I mean, I think if you look last year for the Euros, I think we had eight or nine. Uh, players based in Scotland playing in in the, the national team now it's, uh, it's it's a bit less, but you know I think that um, if we can improve the quality of the league here by 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 bringing in investment so that you know you're not you can make a decision you can say well actually I've got the opportunity to play in England or Iceland or America but actually I've also got the opportunity to play in Scotland, so you would weigh that up equally. If any of our top players get approached to play football full-time elsewhere in, in the world, they're going to jump at that because currently it's not an opportunity for them here. However, the Scottish Government are doing their part to tackle the financial struggle. Around £80,000 of funding will be put into Shelly Care squad, which will allow players to train full-time from January to the World Cup in June 2019. For home-based players such as goalkeeper Jenna Fife and defender Joel Murray, this funding not only means players have more time to train, but they will also get the rest and recovery required to compete at the highest level. Yeah, I think we appreciate that um, funding massively. Um, it's really generous for them to give us that and hopefully that will that will inspire us to go to the World Cup and it will give us the best chance of doing the best we can. Continually like qualifying for major tournaments is inspiring the younger generation and I think this is there's more and more younger people, younger girls just starting to play football and the interest is much higher in like the younger age groups, so I think that's going to keep growing Scottish football in the coming years. Um, yeah, it's a relief for me. I'm quite fortunate that I work in football, so I work for the club as well. So that, that in itself allows me the flexibility so I can kind of schedule my, my training around about my work. Um, but I know that other girls don't have that luxury, so I think it, it'll be massive for the domestic players that, that gain that support because it'll allow them to train in the morning. Um, and then get their rest and recovery during the day before going and training in the evening with their club. So um, it, it's a massive support and to secure that funding um, and resource so quickly after qualification is absolutely great. Yeah, it's, it's huge. Speaking to some of them um, who I know, I mean, it's, it's massive for them. I mean, some, they will still do bits and pieces of their work. Um, they do still have careers that they have to kind of can't put on hold completely, but it's huge for them. Not so much the training side of it, it's the rest and recovery. Um, when you're working full time, I mean these girls, I know, will train in the morning, they'll go and work their nine to five job, whatever it might be, and then they train in the evening and they do that five, six days a week and then they play at a weekend. I mean it's, it's almost unsustainable and certainly having spoken to them, the most important part for them is to have that, that time to be able to fully recover before they go for the next session and it just raises your level a little bit and I have to say like Jo Love in that USA game that's one of the best performances I've seen from her in a long time I thought she was absolutely brilliant and that will be because I'm sure some part of it will be to do with the fact that that she's able to allow her body the right kind of recovery rest and the, and increase the training. Glasgow City and Hibernian have been two of the most successful clubs in Scotland in recent times. City finished 2018 with their 12th consecutive league title, the 13th in their history, while Hibs have their own dominance in cup competition, winning the league and Scottish Cups for three years running. Despite all this, both sides know that the competition around them is getting better by the year, and should there be another financial boost for clubs, then perhaps we could see a team go one better than City and Hibs in the years to come. It's, it's really rewarding for the players when they can, you know, win the title for the twelfth time. When some of them are, um, they've got the the World Cup to look forward to. Um, but I think just ge just generally, it's it's um, the women's game is definitely um, you know getting stronger and stronger in Scotland and. Um, we're proud of the fact that it is it is getting better all the time. Yeah, it's amazing. This is my uh, first Scottish Cup win, so it's even better. But yeah, the girls have done it all before, and it's we want to just keep going and keep getting better. There's a lot to be said for independently run clubs because I think when you are a part of a men's club, sometimes, in my opinion, it's it, it can occasionally be a token gesture. Oh, let's set up a women's team, but we won't really support them. They can wear the strips and and off they go. Um, but I've certainly seen over the past couple of years that, that a lot of clubs are actually genuinely saying we really want to support the women's game, support the girls' game as part of our club. The women's game continues to grow both off and on the pitch. 
for the Scotland national side, their journey has only just begun. England, Argentina and Japan await in France 2019. They say they're going to win.